Well, the country manager of the World Bank, Shio Kanda, commented on the growth of Sri, Lanka's, uh, Sri Lanka, adding that despite the promising trend depicted by the latest data of the country, Sri Lanka still faces elevated poverty levels, income inequality, and labor market concerns. Senior economist of the World Bank, Richard Walker, however, praised the reforms program and added that continued commitment to the reforms are an essential bridge towards Sri Lanka's recovery and prosperity, highlighting that the country's path to recovery still remains narrow. Now, these comments were made against the backdrop where Francisca Ohsog, World Bank's uh, chief economist for the region, commented on South Asia's growth and emphasized that it is expected to be strong at 6% in th uh, this year and, it, and is expected to remain the fastest growing region in the world for the next two years. A special event was held in Colombo under the patronage of World Bank Chief Economist of the South Asian region, Francisca Onsog. During the event, the latest edition of the World Bank's biannual South Asia Development Update and Sri Lanka's Development Update, Bridge to Recovery, were published. Growth in South Asia continues to be the fastest among emerging market and developing country regions. However, that largely reflects strength in India. So for the region as a whole, we expect growth to reach 6% and 6.1% in 2024 and 2025, respectively. But once you take out India, it's more like three and a quarter percent, three and three quarters percent in 2024 and four and a quarter percent in 2025. One reason why the rest of the region is pretty much growing in line with other emerging markets and developing economies is that they include three countries that are among the one quarter of emerging markets and developing economies that are facing financial or faced at some point in the last year or two financial stress. These countries are doing pretty much in line, growing pretty much in line with other emerging markets and developing economies that are also financially stressed and much less fast than before the pandemic. More than other emerging market and developing economies, South Asia relies on the public sector for growth. The latest data shows that some promising trend. The economy is contracting slower pace, over 2.3% in 2023, and witnessing easing inflation, declining uh, interest rate, and uh, current account surplus for the first time showed in the uh, last 50 years. These uh, positive developments have been supported by a boost in the remit remittances and uh, as well as the uh, resurgence in tourism. However, the journey is far from over. The poverty rates re remained elevated and also recovery hinges upon maintaining stability and continuing uh, reforms to complete the stabilization and move more toward the path to our growth, medium-term growth. So the three key messages you can see there, the economy is stabilizing, high poverty, inequality and vulnerability persist despite macroeconomic gains, sustained support for the poor and continued commitment um, to the reforms are an essential bridge to recovery and prosperity. So in terms of the first message, um, a few points are, firstly, growth turned positive in uh, the second half of 23. So you can see here, this shows quarterly growth growth through at least most of 22 into 23 you can see the deep contraction um, but in the latter half of 23 you can see some positive growth some green shoots largely driven by services certain industries um, and food and so despite these uh, sort of macro positive signs Sri Lanka's path to recovery remains narrow so over the medium term we expect uh, or at least next, this year we expect some positive growth and moderate recovery over the medium term we certainly don't see a quick bounce back <laughs> 